الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في سبيله حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جزيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدا أبدا اللهم أمين We will continue to address the issue of raising a great Muslim generation, the primary task for our community and our ummah in general, but primarily our task as Muslims who live in this country. And today we are going to focus on what qualities do we need in this kind of generation? What qualities? do we need in this coming following generation? And the first issue that comes to mind is an issue that we spoke about last week, which is to become a Quranic generation, a generation that is tied to the Quran. The roots are in the Quran and the lives are in the Quran and according to the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he is who he is قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ له. This issue as central as it is to our faith in our belief system is lost on our children think about it it is really lost on our children they don't know why they are here they don't know how to use their life they use their time as if it is all a wasted time and they just want to fill it with anything parents and children alike are complaining how do I get them busy as if there is nothing in this life to do except the PlayStation and the video games and the internet. Parents today are wondering, how did our childhood go without the internet? As if man was created for the internet and man should die on the internet some kids use the Facebook and other social media as if they want to record everything in their life, taking pictures when they are in bed, taking pictures, posting pictures when they are playing, posting pictures in their birthday, when they took dinner, when they went to bed, as if this is what gives them the sense of self. They identify themselves as the internet generation. And parents have resigned to this fact. We submitted to them all the tools because we don't want the headache. But there is much more headache delivering them to this medium than protecting them from this medium. So in any way, the issue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not the center of our life as adults and as youth and as children is very destructive to the future of our community. The future of our community is hinged on this fact. Are we living for Allah? Are we aiming at Allah? Are we journeying towards Allah? Or are we just in a circle running and revolving around ourselves? The next generation of kids who are raised here 
or raised anywhere, they are revolving their life around two things. My desires, my desires, and what people expect of me. Other than that, nothing else matters. So I want to accept myself and be happy and use it the way I want, which leads into self-worship, very dangerous shirk disease. But the other disease is I want my peers to be happy with me. I want to be accepted. We also spoke about this, what is called peer pressure, how his or her peers want to shape them according to their liking and how they also want their friends to be like them. But who is correcting all of this going on in the lives of our youth and our children? Who is protecting them from themselves? So we spoke last week about the role of the parents, which is very central, that you give them time, that you give them knowledge, that you give them the power to make better choices. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي Say, O Muhammad, that my prayer, my sacrifice, my living, and my dying is all dedicated and devoted to Allah. لا شريك له He has no partners. This is not a theoretical statement. This is a way of life which we all call Islam. This is how Islam is captured in real life actions. My prayers for Allah is an easy one to understand. My sacrifice, yes, I say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar and sacrifice, that's an easy one. What about my living? Wa what does it mean that I dedicate my life to Allah? Dedicate and exclusively for Allah. La sharika lah means he is an exclusive owner and guide for everything I think and I do in my life. How do we get our children to understand that much? I believe the first step is that we practice this. I am doing this, my son, because Allah says so and so and so. I do this because the Prophet ﷺ tells us this is how we behave in this situation. Then we are inculcating in our children, and when I say children, by the way, I don't mean those who are under 10. And it's not limited to those who are in their teenagers. We have all children who are in their 20s and 30s. But their brain power when it comes to Islam is less than a teenager. Their priorities are like children. The way they behave is like children. The way they ask for things is like children. So I am not limiting the word children to young kids. I mean any of your children which you continue to, all to call yours are subject to what we're talking about. Why? Because you continue to owe it to them until you die and until they die. One of the two. You continue to owe it to them. You owe them your protection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, qu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Protect yourself and your family from hell fire. How do we protect them? If we say, he is an adult, he can choose what he wants, which means I am relinquishing my responsibility. I become a delinquent parent. I become irresponsible. So your children, no matter how old they may be, you are still more experienced than they are, presumably more knowledgeable than they are, presumably more keen to teach them and others 
than they are to learn and to pick up. So parenthood is a lifelong mission. It is not limited to young children. But when they reach the age of responsibility and they become mature enough and knowledgeable enough, your role is not to enforce what you think is right. It turns. Your role becomes فذكر فإنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر which means remind them that's your role as a reminder you are not a controller and a keeper over them when they reach the age of 16, 17, 19, 20 and they are aware enough of their responsibility your role is not to enforce as you used to do when they were younger. Your role is to guide, continue to advise, and to remind them, to remind them of their duties and their responsibilities. So what are we looking for in this upcoming generation? The first issue is for them to understand who Allah is. It seems simple. It looks simple. But the reality that goes with this statement is it is not enough to acknowledge that Allah exists or that Allah is your creator. The mushrikeen of Mecca, they acknowledged all of that. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ الله. So they never denied neither the existence of Allah nor did they deny that he is their own creator, the one who created them and everything else. They will also admit that Allah is the creator of heavens and earth. So recognition of Allah as a creator or as the creator is not the biggest issue but it is central it is central the bigger issue is which the mushrikeen fall in which is but I want to live my way I want to worship him the way I think the way I saw my parents do so we have cultural Muslims whose inheritance that they leave for their children is cultural Islam. Islam of the parents, Islam of the grandparents, Islam of the tribe and the family and the social context or the political context for that matter. So we have Muslims who worship money. We have Muslims who worship themselves and their desires. You ask, how do you call them Muslims if this is what they worship? If you say otherwise, you kick 50% of Muslims out of Islam. But they are Muslims. That's what they profess and confess. And that's what they identify with. But their understanding of Islam is similar to the misunderstanding of the pagans, the idol worshippers of Arabia at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. It's dangerous. Why do you worship idols? إِنَّمَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَىٰ مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَىٰ We only worship them because they are sinless and they will get us closer to Allah ﷻ. So they have a logic of their time, a logic of their culture, by which they live. Our children, unfortunately, they have worse logic than this. So the mushrikeen, they used to worship idols. Our children refuse to pray the way you pray, but they think of themselves as Muslims. Muslims by inheritance, by culture, by the social context of their birth and their life. And that is a satisfying Islam 
in their mind. This is very dangerous. A person like this, at the first test in their life, they will want to run away from the name Muslim or Islam. That's why some of our children, they do not use the home family given name. They use more palatable names. My name is Muhammad, but call me Mo or Mark. This is a reality. So at home they are Muhammad, but in the school they are some other names. So at home it is Fatima, but in the school it is some other names. So they create a social, personal context for themselves in which they live. So they live as Mu, not as Muhammad. And it doesn't bother them that they don't know who Muhammad is, alayhi salatu wasalam. It really is not crossing their head altogether. It is on us, when they are young, to teach them. What is the story of Muhammad? Why did your father call you Umar? Who is Umar? Who is Abu Bakr? Who is Sulaiman? Who is Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Without us sitting with our children and teaching them who they are, who created them, and what is their mission in this life, they are lost. And we all read Al-Fatiha. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path. And we say, Sirat al an'amta alayhim. The path of those whom you have blessed. غير المغضوب عليهم Not the ones whom you sent your wrath upon ولا الضالين Not the path of those who are, have gone astray So we all pray Our children memorize Al-Fatiha Most of them But they do not know What reading Al-Fatiha means Even the word Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is not known to our children. They memorize it. And they are happy to memorize it. And unfortunately, many of us have made memorizing Al-Fatiha and some surah as the ultimate goal of tarbiyah. Even memorizing the Quran is not going to be enough because the challenges and the pollutions that are thrown at their life every day are so sweeping and powerful that even that memorization could be completely erased, not only out of their memory, but out of their attention altogether. So the first thing is we need our generation to start learning who Allah is with all of His holy names and holy attributes. It is not enough that some parents teach their children that Allah is Shadeed al Iqab, Allah is Jabbar, Allah has hellfire. This is prohibited, this is haram, haram, haram. Nor is it fair that some on the other side go to the other extreme and Allah is oft forgiving, oft merciful, and He never punishes you, He loves you. Because we, we are begging our children to accept Allah as if they don't owe it to Him. So one of the things we need our children to know is how do they become about as humans? What source is the source from which they came? Because they think that they are what they are. And nobody made them. Only on the passing as a matter of satisfying parents, they say, of course Allah created me. But they don't know. What did he create them from? They don't know. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا They don't know that there was a time when man was nothing to mention and nothing to remember. 
they don't know that they are created from dust or clay or from weakness. خلق الإنسان ضعيفا. الله الذي خلقكم من ضعف ثم جعل من بعد ضعف قوة ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبة يخلقكم في بطون أمهاتكم. They do not know that they came from the weakest of the weakest of elements to recognize that whoever created them is a great one. He is the greatest, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? How did Allah turn dust into khalqan akhar? A totally different creation. Mud that was formed into the shape of a human being and Allah would blow into it from the spirit and the spirit will turn the mud into a living human being. Most of our children think that they came here by chance or they evolved from apes as they are told in the schools. So we have to be actively engaged in their life. They will not get this information from their school. And most of them don't have grandparents to babysit them and talk to them. You are the only parent they know. You are the only one who has to sit down and designate time and read and collect knowledge and make it easy for them to understand and to absorb and to practice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he told us that we are created from dust or from ma'in maheen, despicable fluid. What is this? It is so miraculous that Allah challenged the ignorant Arab idol worshippers to think about it. Ya ayyuha nas, in kuntum fi raybin min al ba'ath, fa inna khalaqnakum min turab. O mankind, if you are doubtful when it comes to your resurrection, think about it. We've created you from dust. You're wondering because أَإِذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَإِنَّا لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ You're asking, if we turn into dust, are we going to, become, to come back into a living human being? Are we going to be resurrected? وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَهُ He gave us, threw at us an example, and he forgot his own creation. قَالَ مَنْ يُحْيِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ who would revive the bones after the decay? قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ Allah, the one who created it the first time, He will resurrect it and revive it the second time. They don't know that we came from dead stuff and Allah turned it into living. قَالُوا رَبَّنَا أَمَتَّنَا اثْنَتَيْنِ وَأَحْيَيْتَنَا اثْنَتَيْنِ فَاعْتَرَفْنَا بِذُنُوبِنَا You have created us from dead stuff, given us one life, and then you will revive us, right? You will put us to death, and then you will revive us again. So we wear dust into a human, a human back to dust, what is so difficult that that dust is revived again into a human being? Our children are worse off when it comes to information than the Arab idol worshippers, the pagans. In the sense that the pagans never denied the existence of Allah. I get calls from young children, males and females, and they say, how do I know that Allah exists? I have an atheist friend who's asking me questions and I don't know what to tell them. Who's responsible for their ignorance? Who is responsible to teach them? Brothers and sisters, we keep raising those issues. We keep focusing on materials and knowledge that are essential for our Muslim young children 
to acknowledge their Islam, to acknowledge Allah. And yet, very few children come to the masjid. Very few children come to the masjid. And most of those who come to the masjid, they come to play, not to pray. Who is responsible? Even those children whose parents have taken the time and put the effort to bring them to the masjid, who is going to make sure they understand what the masjid is for? What are they supposed to do here? It is similar to their mission in life and what they are supposed to use their life for. It is replicated here. We bring them to the masjid and we bring them basketballs and other games to attract them to come. But they need to know why are they attracted to come here and what is important when they come here. I see the kids playing, but I don't see a single parent volunteering to talk to them. Not a single one. So you leave them to young youth like themselves to guide them. Is this enough? Are you satisfied is the question. Do you see your children as they come here increasing in knowledge and faith? What do they pick coming from the masjid? Do you talk to them, even those who bring their kids here or arrange for them to come here? Do you sit with them after or before to tell them what they need to focus on coming to the masjid? What should they pick going home after joining their friends in a game or anything else? Of course, we have educational activities for the kids. But uh, the question is, are you satisfied? If you are satisfied, alhamdulillah. But if you are not, then do your part, please. Your children need your guidance. They will not on their own understand what the Quran is saying and how to absorb it, how to understand it, how to fathom. Why does Allah say this is haram and this is halal? Why? They would not on their own. They think with children's heads, not with adult heads. Even some adults, they do not understand certain haram and halal issues. So brothers and sisters, let us focus on this coming generation. There is no way that Islam will outlive our generation if we do not actively engage this generation before they turn adults like us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and bless our families and bless our children. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه اللهم اجعلنا ممن يتبعون سنته ويعيشون على ملته ويموتون على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه اللهم أمين Brothers and sisters It is very central that we connect our children to Allah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself tells us وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا After all, if your children are not obedient to Allah if they are not submissive to Allah they will never be obedient to you but most of us are focusing on our children being obedient to us more than being obedient and submissive to Allah. We get nervous more when they do not listen to us more than if they do not listen to Allah. So the punishment is they will listen to neither. They will not listen to either way. 
we mentioned before that Luqman to get his son to be obedient and respectful to him he only had to do one thing and one thing only Ya Bunaya la tushrik billah O my son associate none with Allah Inna shirk la zulmun azim shirk is a grave injustice then immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells all children وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ We have enjoined on man to be kind, respectful, and obedient to his parents. Then, حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْن The Quran singles out the mother who bore him weakness upon weakness. She is weak as a human and she is weaker as a mother. After nine month pregnancy and two year of care 24 7, of course she loses strength, emotional, psychological, and physical, not only physical. Allah is calling for us husbands to pay attention to our wives so that they are able to put time and effort with their children. So if we put them on edge, if they are always nervous, if they are always insecure in their marriage, where do they get the energy and the power to give anything to their children? Or if we leave our wives uninformed and ignorant in many cases about Islam, what will they give to their own children? They love their children. There's no question about it. But it is on us men to take whatever we learn in the masjid and deliver it to our sisters at home, our wives, and our children. Why didn't Allah order women to become mandatory congregants on the Friday prayer? Why is it only men? It doesn't mean that women cannot come, but Allah gave them a license, a break, because the norm is most women will have children. And children definitely need someone to take care of them. And since Friday is the only mandatory educational forum for a Muslim, it doesn't mean that others are not required attending classes or attending halaqa or studying Islam. Of course, we have to do this. But this is mentioned in a so powerful statement that no man who is a Muslim should skip any Friday prayer. Allah says, Leave your business and come. You men, you are running for money, leave your business and come. Wasa'aw ila dhikrillah. Hurry up ila dhikrillah. To remember Allah. Which means what? If this is the only mandatory educational forum for the ummah then those who have not come where do they learn when do they learn unless you carry what you pick and take home take home and grow your own garden water your own garden nourish and nurture your own children and your own wives this is how we grow a muslim family and how we grow a great Muslim generation. I will keep repeating this until somebody tells me enough is enough. But this will not be enough for me. I will not stop. Until I see your children here. Until I see your children growing up as Muslims until they know who their prophet is, who Allah is, the Arab poet says, ليس اليتيم من انتهى أبواه من هم الحياة وخلفاه ذليلا An orphan is not just a person whose parents have died and left him in need and helplessness. إن اليتيم من التقى أما تخلت أو أبا مشغولا 
the orphan indeed is one who grew up to find that his mother neglected him or his father is too busy to attend to his needs. We have both. We have the negligent mothers and the busy, 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 busy parents. Too busy to have children, but they do have children, but then they are too busy to take care of their children. This is not a posture that we as an ummah could raise a great generation, let alone a Quranic generation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nurture our hearts to do our duties. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها يا مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين اللهم أعنا على ما كلفتنا اللهم أعنا على ما كلفتنا ولا تشغلنا بما كفلتنا اللهم ابسط لنا في الرزق وانسأ لنا في العمر اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرة التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اختم لنا بخاتمة السعادة أجمعين مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة